So we don't ever want to suppress your appetite, okay? That's just your body telling you you need food. So when you need food, you eat it. You just use some common sense with your portion size and all that. Okay, now, the question is, she's coming into workout at 5 o'clock in the morning. Should she eat ahead of time? Let's consider that. When you wake, what time are you getting up? 4.40. Okay, 4.40. <laughs> when she wakes up at 4.40 and gets up, where is her blood sugar? Uh, low. Low. Because she hasn't had anything to eat or drink since the day before, right? Okay. So if the blood sugar is low, we know the body is already producing some insulin. All right? So if you come in and start working out, you're really risking that state where you're going to burn muscle tissue, okay? The insulated state. Now, let me say this because there's a book, and it's, it's a good book. It's called Body for Life. And the guy who wrote it, Bill Phillips, and he's a smart guy. I, I, I appreciate most of what he has to say. One of his programs that he recommends is this first thing in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning workout. However, the thing that he mentions that most people neglect is he says limit it to 20 minutes. Because if you start pushing beyond that, that's when you start getting into that state where you're going to burn up muscle tissue. And I doubt that you're coming in and doing less than 20 minutes. Is that true or not? No. Okay. So what I would recommend is get up around 4 and eat something small, even if it's just a little bit, because you've got to generate a little blood sugar so that when you start your workout, your blood sugar is not low. If it is, we know what happens next. Okay? All right. Oh, and I want to go in and address this question about the... Um, the middle of the afternoon when everybody feels tired, okay? Here's what people tend to do, all right? Because they're not eating at regular intervals throughout the day, and because people do tend to skip breakfast a lot, then they generally will overeat lunch, weigh themselves down with a big meal, okay? If you're eating every three and a half to four hours throughout the day, those meals are going to be very moderate-sized. You're not going to be eating Thanksgiving-sized meals every four hours. If you are, we need to talk. But, but that's not what you're going to be doing. Moderate-sized meals throughout the day. But people don't do that. So at, at work during the day, you've got uh, an hour for lunch. And so you say, well, this has got to last me till 5 o'clock. So people eat these big, huge meals. All right, now your body has got to work overtime trying to assimilate and digest all this food. So, um, and what your body can't assimilate, it, it stores its body fat. All right, and then because you've got uh, because you ate so much, usually you drove your blood sugar levels up too high, meaning your body starts producing a lot of insulin to bring that blood sugar back down. And usually the result of that is it brings the blood sugar down too low, and then you feel tired and sluggish because you overcompensated. So again, the way to defeat that: eating regular meals throughout the day. And if you if you work a normal eight-hour day where you've got an hour for lunch, what I recommend is you bring something with you to have a mid-morning snack and bring something with you to have a mid-afternoon snack so that your lunch, the, the size of that meal is not that much. Okay, quick look here at the sample food list. Another yes, another question. question. With the morning thing. Yes. Do you have to eat, um, do you have to eat an hour before you work out? Well, it depends, because some stuff, some stuff will digest quicker. If you're, you know what, at 5 o'clock in the morning, you guys do this together? Yeah. We're both insane. Well, it's the what? only time we can come. All right, all right. I, I, I commend you for doing that. You know what I would recommend? The best bet is something like a, a meal replacement drink, one of those things you make in a blender, because those digest real fast. And you could probably just give yourself, if you drank, if you made that and drank half of it, and then brought the other half with you and drank that immediately after the workout, my guess is, because that's something I just quit, my guess is that would get you by just fine. Bananas are fruit, it's high in sugar. So depending on what your goal is, I would caution you about a banana. You're fairly lean. I measured her body fat. It's pretty low. She's around 15%. You're someone who I wouldn't discourage from eating a banana, okay? But other people who are really trying to reduce that body fat, I would, I would not recommend the, the banana because you want to keep that sugar out of the diet. There's lots of foods that are high in nutrients that you can get from other sources. We talked about calcium earlier. There's, there's more calcium in green vegetables than there is in milk. But everybody thinks they've got to drink milk to get it. Okay? Vitamin C. Where do you get vitamin C? Oranges, right? There's more vitamin C in one potato than there is in 10 oranges. But the citrus industry wants you to drink orange juice, so they don't tell you that. Okay? All right, let's go through this real quick. We talked about lean proteins. Egg whites or egg beaters, um, chicken breast, turkey breast, tuna packed in water, almost all seafoods, 
plain, non-fat cottage cheese. The biggest challenge to eating correctly for most people is the protein because they get tired of these few choices. And I don't have any real good answers to that except to tell you that um, protein supplements are usually the best thing you can do to add a little variety. Protein powders or protein bars or that kind of thing. I would just simply recommend that the protein supplements that say 100% soy or whatever like that, they're not going to be as qualitative as the ones that are made from whey or whatever. Well, well, beef tends to be high fat. Even the leanest piece of beef that you can buy is going to have more fat than what we would want you to eat, okay? Let's talk real quick about water. How many people are drinking like a gallon of water a day? Very good. Wow, a lot of water drinking. But if you include the coffee, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and iced tea. And iced tea, yeah. Then it adds up. Oh, you guys are slick. Let me tell you. Still water does add substance in it. No. Nice like try, though. Lots of water. And, and if it makes you feel better, I've used that exact same idiotic rationale myself. But no, it doesn't work that way, okay? Um, when you wake up in the morning, let's start out at the very beginning because we talked about that earlier. When you wake up in the morning, your body is not only in a state of low blood sugar, because you haven't eaten since the day before, your body is also in a state of dehydration. Now you might feel thirsty in the morning, you might not. Some people don't. I usually do, but you might not. But understand, your body at that moment is dehydrated. You need to get water in your body. All of the processes within your body depend on the presence of water. So get up and drink water. It's important. It'll wake you up. It'll get you going. Throughout the day, remember your need for water. Your body is 70% water. And because your body's filtration system only works in one direction, it doesn't recycle. It only works in one direction. We've got to constantly drink water to keep the body clear. So um, the only thing I would, I would urge you to uh, be cautious about is don't drink lots of water at the time that you're eating food. Because then you dilute your digestive enzymes and it actually um, it retards the digestive process a little bit. So better to drink the water, at least the, when you're going to drink bottles like this, uh, in between meals. And when you're actually eating your food, be a little more moderate with your beverage consumption. Caffeine uh, displaces water from the body. Now let me tell you why that's not good. Your body is made of about 70% water. Most people don't know that. Okay? We are largely made up of water. The water in our body, we, we, we have to have it in order to perform our, our daily functions and, and to be healthy and all that. So um, what we want to do is you want to drink lots of water throughout the day to constantly replenish the water in your body. And I, I, I heard it described this way one time and it made such perfect sense to me. I'm going I'm to tell you the same thing. Think of a swimming pool. It has a filtration system, right? And the water is constantly recycled through that filtration system and that keeps it clean and sparkling and all Okay, well, our body has a filtration system, but it just doesn't recycle. So we've got to pour fresh water in to get rid of the old, you know, like that. So in other words, you're going to go, you know, urinate a lot during the day. But that's, that's what you have to do to keep the water in your body clean and fresh and all so, there's nothing wrong with caffeine, but if you're going to drink coffee, make sure you're drinking plenty of water to compensate for that. For people who have difficulty giving up sodas, addictions to sodas, and my, my best friend Paul here is one, all right? This guy cannot stop drinking Pepsis, and he will kill. He'll take human life <laughs> for Pepsis, okay? Yes. For someone like that, if you can replace those sodas with diet sodas, you've made tremendous gains, okay? Now, is it as good as drinking water? No. The, the diet sodas have... Uh, chemicals and nitrates and assorted things in there that we really don't want in your body, but because it doesn't have the sugar, it does not raise your blood sugar level, you don't get the blood sugar fluctuations, and metabolically it doesn't affect it. it the only effect it has is the fact that it displaces water or whatever, but that's, that's small compared to what you're asking. Uh, no. So for people like that, if I can get them to replace the sodas with the, with the diet sodas, then that's a, that's a real positive step. But if you're drinking 100 a day, cut the heck. That's a lot. The problem with sodium, when you have sodium in your diet, make sure you retain water. Okay? And when you retain water, that does have a, an effect on suppressing your metabolism to some degree, depending on how much you're retaining. Okay? 
Um, when you have less sodium, your body releases this extra water. First of all, you don't have that puffy, you know, that excess water weight. And second of all, your metabolism will burn faster when you're not retaining a lot of extra water. 